With that, I will hand it over to Mr. Christopher Krupp, practicing architect, founder of SketchupAcademy.com, and president of Krupp Associates Architects in Chicago, Illinois, and Asheville, North Carolina. Thank you, Aurora. Uh, this morning, I want to talk about uh, photorealistic rendering in SketchUp. Uh, the key uh, statement there is that it's not really uh, directly in SketchUp. You have to add uh, additional programs to SketchUp, or plugins essentially, that will do renderings for you. Nice part is they're integrated into SketchUp for the most part. You're, you're going to find some that are not essentially standalone rendering programs. Uh, if you have received my book, uh, there is a chapter on rendering, and in that chapter, there's a list of, I don't know, a dozen or so rendering programs. What I would suggest is most of them have uh, a 30-day free trial, so you can uh, give it a shot. Uh, they're going to range from probably $69 up to $1,600, so something like that. The price is fluctuate over time, but uh, try them out, I guess the best thing I can say there. Um, today I'm going to talk about two different programs that I use. One of them uh, does static renderings, which by that what I mean is there's no movement, essentially it's a photograph. Uh, that one is called iRender NXT. It's by a company called uh, iRender Systems, I believe. Uh, then another one that's animated renderings, uh, I use a program called Lumen RT 2015 Architect. They couldn't make that name any longer. Uh, it does animated renderings and can also do stills. So with that, what I'd like to do initially is show you some examples of renderings that uh, for the most part are going to be the static type, but we'll look at them. Uh, just to see what kind of results you can get. So I've got a few. I won't spend a lot of time here showing you all of these, but um, I think it's worthwhile to see what they might come out to look like. Uh, this one is for a hotel that I was working on, and there are actually two uh, types here. One is from the Lumen RT, and the other is from iRender. We'll look at the first one. So this is iRender. Uh, with this program, you can add lighting. Uh, the people here are actually added in SketchUp. The cars are added in SketchUp. But the key thing here is that lighting is added. You can see that uh, even the headlights of the car here are, are lit. Uh, so in iRender, literally you can make anything in your model a light fixture. Uh, so you're not stuck with just having to use some that uh, you know they've provided with the program. Which, by the way, they do. There are lamps and uh, you know floor lamps and spotlights and highlights, that sort of thing. This um, is just a small piece of the hotel, obviously, but uh, I think that's pretty effective. Uh, what's happening here is that uh, the the sunlight is actually changed or set in SketchUp, and the uh, background is added in this program. Another version of it. This is an exterior. So all that lighting that you see there has been added uh, in iRender. In reality, what happens is you, within the SketchUp model, um, would create the light fixture and tell iRender in, within SketchUp still that that is a light fixture. Uh, within iRender, you can control the brightness of those lights. You have I think eight different channels, so you essentially like circuits, if you will, uh, and really on a dimmer switch. These next few are actually from Lumen RT. Uh, that's animated, but within that program, you can, uh, well, you're supposed to be able to export a still, but they don't come out too well in this particular version. Uh, they do have versions that are quite a bit more expensive. Uh, this one is $4.95, I believe. So for what you pay, you get a lot out of it. So what I've done here is these are just clips. Uh, I use Windows Clipping Tool to 
essentially drag these out of there. I think it works pretty well. So it's a workaround. I don't like the result of their uh, exporting with still. Another shot. All these people that you see here are actually from Lumen RT. Uh, when you get into the animated version, the water here will actually be moving. The people are moving, talking to each other, that sort of thing. It's kind of cool. Uh, yet another one. I'll go back to this one for a minute. Notice the water. Uh, that effect that you see for the water is actually from the program. It's what's called caustic effect. In other words, it makes water uh, look like it actually has some form to it. <clears throat> uh, yet the last one. So we'll quit that. Go back to some others. This is that house that we've been working on over the week, or the last two weeks. Uh, these are renderings for, for that particular house. This one, again, is from iRender NXT. Uh, the people were uh, put in in SketchUp. Those are actually people from 3D Warehouse. Uh, you can make your own people if you want, but these are just flat uh, billboard type people, you know, like you might see in a movie theater, uh, essentially, uh, an image, a photograph of a person put onto a face and then just cut out. The background is from iRender. Uh, actually, it's put in in iRender, but that's actually a photograph that I have. So you can, any photograph that you have, you can stick into the background. Uh, the sunlight, uh, the materials, all of that is done in SketchUp. All the planting is done in SketchUp. Another version, I don't know if you recall, we had a gable version and a flat roof version. So these are the two different options. And if you notice here, the background actually is completely different. Uh, so give you an idea how much uh, options there are, how much variation you can create. So from that one, you can see kind of a rolling hillside to this one, which is a little more mountainous. Uh, you could literally take a picture of your site and use it uh, behind the model here. Uh, kitchen. All the lighting here is added in iRender. And what I also want you to notice here is that the floor has some shine to it. Uh, reflection, essentially. The countertops do as well. All of that is added again in iRender. Uh, however, you can control that amount of... Well, you can't control the amount of reflection, but you can say that it is reflective in SketchUp. So the materials are controlled actually within SketchUp. I don't know if you can see it, but this light fixture over here is, is lit. Uh, that's one I designed and just said make that a light. This is one that I kind of like. Uh, this is what's called clay modeling, or they're very close to that. Uh, I use these quite a bit for design purposes. Uh, sometimes sort of hard to see the forms and shapes within SketchUp. So within this particular program, uh, if everything's just white, for example, it'll come out looking like this. There also is what's called a clay rendering mode, which just makes everything gray. So essentially the idea is carved out of clay. What I do like about it is I can see the forms here. Another shot of that house now further distance, a different background. These trees that you see in here are actually, all the planting actually is all from Lumen RT. So uh, the nice part about Lumen RT is it provides you with lots of trees and people, uh, cars, that sort of thing, uh, that you can add to your SketchUp model. Uh, iRender does not do that. Uh, it does have something in it called Tree Maker which you can actually make your own trees. And if we get a chance, we'll look at that. But I think, at least the last time I looked, uh, the program's called RT, no, I'm sorry, iRender, let's see, iRender Tree Maker, something like that. Uh, it, it comes built into the program, but I think it's out there. Uh, RP Tree Maker is what it's called. Uh, that uh, program, I think, is available for free. So if you want to build your own trees, you can do that. Here's that same living room now with some materials added. 
And if you notice right now, the only light coming in here is from the outside. Here, this next one, light fixtures have been added in the ceiling. And you can see that it's a little more light, you know, lively, lightly, lively, I guess is the right way. Lively, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, here, materials again have been added. Uh, in this case, the railings and things I've basically set in the rendering program to make them chrome. Uh, so you're seeing the sheen on the floor again. Uh, the materials on the chairs have been a little bit highlighted. And uh, the lighting has been cast on the fireplace. Similar thing, I think you can see this even better here, where uh, it's basically a rendering of the living room setting itself. Uh, lighting, again, has been in, added in iRender. And uh, the lighting in SketchUp, actually, the sunlight has been turned way down. And you can control that here within iRender as well. So you can control the sunlight and what they call sky, which is kind of reflective light, if you will. So that's the end of that. Go back to another group of them here. This is iRender again. Uh, all the lighting that you see in here has been actually constructed in SketchUp. Uh, and these lights up at the top along these beams. And in iRender, they've been told to be lights. So you can control that quite a bit. I'm not that crazy about Lumen RT to do interiors, but iRender does interiors pretty nicely. That's from Lumen RT, exterior. So that's just, we just cut that out of a still, uh, it's an animated rendering, but just stop it, cut that out of there. Same thing. And if you look at the water over here, you can see that actually it looks like a fountain. Now that, that took a little bit of time. That fountain actually came from a 3D warehouse, but it was just solid. And I don't know if you can see it in here, but uh, let's see if we can go a little closer. There's slots and all kinds of things been cut into that to make it look more realistic. So I spent a fair amount of time on that. But the bottom line is that more realism is really the point. Another shot. This is from Lumen RT. All the trees you see here are from Lumen RT, the cars, the people, uh, and the background. Uh, Lumen RT has about 16 backgrounds that you can utilize for yourself. Uh, unfortunately, you can't throw a photograph in there behind as a uh, background, but they have you know, a fair amount of different backgrounds that you can choose from. Another shot, top view. What's nice about Lumen RT is that it works much like SketchUp in that you can navigate around within it. And here are just a few mis miscellaneous ones. Some of these are going to be, well, you can do a car. That's uh, in iRender right now. And that's the picture of the city of Chicago. So that's that whole thing. Even the water here is the background. Same thing here, but now the city background is at night and the brightness has been turned down. So it gives you a, a night kind of scene. Interior of the car, spaceship. These are some that I just played around with to see if I could actually accomplish these kinds of things in SketchUp. And you can. That's all SketchUp, that whole thing. The background is actually added in uh, in iRender. Another iRender uh, image from inside. Uh, all the lighting here has uh, obviously been added there. You can see the sheen on the table. Uh, people are basically in SketchUp. Uh, these uh, pottery over here is from 3D Warehouse. Interior of a restaurant that I did. Uh, if you notice, that light fixture is the same one I had inside the house over there. Uh, here, the uh, lighting uh, has been mostly from the exterior. There's a lot of windows here. But this would not have as much life to it if I hadn't added these light fixtures within this. 
You can see in the back this cafe portion that's bright. These are the kind of things you're looking for to give something some life. A little bit of Photoshop post editing in this, taking out some glare that were on the, on these uh, booths. Here, a mountainside house. That background obviously was added. This is uh, iRender NXT again. Uh, iRender NXT. This is, gives you a really good idea of what you can do with lighting. Uh, this was just a study for a corridor in a space that we did. Uh, this is multiple salons all in one space. And that was the central space. And we were working with lighting in this case. So actually that worked out pretty well for us. Because we could actually see what truly was going to happen here. Uh, I render NXT again. This is probably one of my favorite uh, renderings. I think the you know the life in this is really good. Uh, it took me a while to get it the way I wanted, get the sunlight back in here the way it should work. But all of the sunlight and that sort of thing in this rendering uh, was done in uh, SketchUp. The house was in SketchUp. The background was added. The grass texture here I think is phenomenal. Uh, I found one that finally I light and uh, I use it all the time. Uh, I think one of the seminars back in the past uh, I offered this up and if anybody would like to get their hands on that texture I'd be happy to uh, send that off to you. So let Aurora know. Um, plants, all of those kinds of things are added in SketchUp. Similar situation how all these trees and things are added in SketchUp. Background has been added in iRender. There's that grass again. If you notice, that's one version of a house, and that's another version of exactly the same house. This is the one we ended up with. Uh, it's under construction right now, and it's coming out very nicely. Uh, French Country House. This was a client who... Uh, really needed to see what their house looked like and honestly uh, clients will spend quite a bit of extra money to get these kinds of images we did didn't this was purely the outside we never constructed the inside of this in SketchUp whatsoever uh, again background added in I render and um, car that car is from 3d warehouse people are billboard things again little quick rendering. I actually used this house in our seminars, but it's a lot better than the rendering that you get or lack of rendering you get in SketchUp. Another project here. There's that car again. I guess we're done with this one. And we'll look at the last one. And we'll be done. I guess we already looked at that, so never mind. Okay, uh, those are examples of what you can do. The thing I want to look at here for another second is just, there's that kitchen again. I just kind of want to eliminate these off my list. Uh, the seminar house, what I call this, another version of it. And if you remember, this is the thing that we've been working on all along. Uh, conceptually, that's our model. Obviously, more than conceptually, it is our model. The people here have been added in SketchUp. I think I have this whole thing as a group there. So those are ones that you can find from 3D Warehouse. What you want to look for is models that are, you can just type in a search in 3D Warehouse for people. But look for some that are called Face Me. What does that mean? If you notice when I turn this model, those people are always looking at you. And that's important because they're just flat little billboards if you come from the top. You can see that they are just flat. So from the top, they're going to be just a line, if you will. Uh, so look for those Face Me uh, components. You can make them in SketchUp as well. Just when you go to uh, 
making a component out of something. Let's see. Let's just draw something here. I'll just pull it up. And this is not the kind of thing you want to do this with. You want to do this with something flat. But if you go to make a component, right click on it, make component, there is a selection here that says always face camera. That's what's called a face me component. So if you're trying to make one of these things, and you can, you can just make a face and stick a photograph on it, and then you have to carve it all out. You got to cut it all out of there. But uh, make sure you click always face camera when you do that and you will get uh, these components that face you all the time. Where would you use those? People, trees, plants, things like that. And when you use these, uh, rather than them being 3D, they take up very little energy and allow SketchUp to move rather fluidly without, especially in trees, if you think about trees that have a million leaves on it and it's all gonna be tracked. In this particular kind of situation with a face me component, uh, you don't have that issue because it's just flat. It's just a picture of a tree. And it comes off pretty well. So in iRender, which is this whole toolbar up here, and a lot of these are going to come with a toolbar. Uh, we'll go ahead and open this. Get this back to that view we had before. There are a lot of varieties here. This little guy here is your light fixture. This guy here is the RP Tree Maker. It's Create Plant. This comes built into iRender, but RP Tree Maker, I believe if you search the web, uh, you can find that for free. So what do we do with this? To set up a rendering. Let's put that back where it was for a minute. <clears throat> key thing for this in SketchUp is to set the sun and your view. Uh, whatever you render here uh, is going to be the view that you get in, uh, in, in the program, you know, the rendering, final rendering in the end. Uh, what you need to know is that these lines that are flat on the surface, anything of that nature, is not going to show in your rendering. Because they essentially ignore lines. All they think about is edges and shadow, that kind of stuff. So, for example, let's see if we can get in here. In this kitchen, take a second, I suppose. I'm trying to zoom into it. There. In this kitchen, you might be tempted to just draw a bunch of lines. Uh, on that face and represent that cabinet. That will not show up when you do a rendering. These actually have to have relief to them. Spaces between the doors have to be there. Uh, all of that has to occur, otherwise nothing shows up. You're going to have just a big blank face here if these are nothing but lines on the surface. So keep that in mind. Um, this is a place where you do want to add detail. So spend the time to make sure that that comes out right. Otherwise, you're going to get something that you're not expecting, uh, which is just a big blank white face. So here, uh, when you're doing renderings, you're going to have to spend a little more time on your model. Let's see if I can get to this elevation. You might be able to see it better here. All the spaces between the doors are, have been put in. Don't be afraid to exaggerate that a bit. Uh, if you make these spaces too narrow, sometimes they just kind of disappear. But as an example of this, you would actually have to put grooves in your sidewalk if you want those joints to show. Uh, a single line is not going to do it for you. So uh, set the sun in SketchUp. So we have the sun on. If we turn it off, this is not going to be your best rendering because it's not going to take advantage of the fact that you can now show sunshine and shadows very effectively. And set these to where you like them to be. So in SketchUp, as you probably already know, there's uh, sun settings here. So months of the year, 
time of day. Uh, just change it to where you like it. You know, give, give it its best effect artistically, I guess is the way to put that. And once you set this up, make sure you save this uh, scene. So up, update that scene, right click update. So that what scenes do preserve is that shadow setting. Okay. Now, how would you go about making this rendering a little more full of life? We, we need to add trees. We've got people already, but maybe we add a car, we add a background, that sort of thing. Uh, typically, I will not add a background in a rendering within SketchUp. I'll do it in a rendering program because within SketchUp, it's uh, not really going to work for you very well because it, it's kind of uncontrollable and it's hard to get something that covers the whole background. So I'll add some trees. I have them in my component library. Is that a little bigger? I had this problem before. Let me drag this out. Just trying to get it so I can get to these menus up here. Uh, components are, this is 2015, so they're going to be up here uh, under the window menu. In 2016, they're going to be over here on the right side. So if I go to components, these are the ones actually from RT, Lumen RT. Uh, they will show up automatically in your component library, which is kind of cool. Uh, and you can use them in your SketchUp model directly. You can also add these, and I'll show you that within the rendering program also, kind of as a, li a live rendering. You're building it as you go. So you can actually see the rendering and add trees and plants and things right in the program. We we'll take one of these and just drag it out. There it is. So it's a component and you can scale these with the scale tool if you like. I'm gonna turn the sun off here for a second. Sun being on, by the way, is very, very negative situation when you're trying to do all this stuff. It takes up too much energy. So I can make it wider overall. I can make it taller. I can make, make it fatter, if you will. I'm just trying to get out of the thing. So those are from uh, Lumen RT, and if you notice them, they're actually, they are 3D, but the kind of uh, what you call a proxy in other words, it's not really the final product. It represents it. You see all these kind of, uh, what, they look like a bunch of flat, transparent rectangles floating around. Those actually have all the leaves in them, but they don't show up until you actually render it. So what that allows you to do is move this around very easily. If that were truly a 3D tree, you would uh, not be able to do what I'm doing here very easily. They have several different types. These are evergreens. Uh, th these are the ones that you can get for trees. So they have dead trees, which, <laughs> okay. I'm not sure I understand that. They have desert trees, so it would be cactus. And these work just like a, a SketchUp component. If you wanna make numerous ones of these, you can copy them. And let's say four times that. And usually what I will do with these, I, it doesn't look that good when they're all the same size. So use the scale tool and kind of change the arrangement of things here. Make them taller, shorter, fatter, whatever works for you, whatever you want it to look like. And maybe don't put these all in line. So I'll just shuffle them around a little bit. So don't be afraid to change them. You're going to find a lot more life lifelike look if they're not all identical. As we know, plants don't all grow exactly the same. So don't be afraid to do that. That's all going to add to the realism of your drawing. The other thing not to be afraid to do is to put plants actually in front of the building. Because uh, as you know, let's see, where's the one I want? Fruit trees. These actually have fruit in them. People always plant their stuff 
essentially behind with the house behind uh, that doing that it may obscure part of your model however it helps the appearance overall because it makes it look more real so don't be afraid to cover up part of your building uh, obviously if that's in a place that you don't want to cover up you may have to relocate that a little bit but definitely put it out in front and what you're going to find is that not necessarily that you put it in the right place that it would be but you put it in a place where it's going to look good with the rendering uh, so don't necessarily nail down the location by plan you may have to nail it down by appearance uh, for the view you want so what, what does that mean put it where it looks good so what the bottom line is uh, we'll go back now we got a vine. I'm not sure. I haven't used this before. It probably should be hanging over a wall or something. I'll we'll put it there just for grins. I don't know if I'm going to like that, but we'll leave it there. And you can move them up and down. You don't have to place them exactly how they are. You can let them stick through the ground, whatever you'd like to do with that, or even into a wall get it to look more realistic. Now that looks kind of funky, I realize, but when it's rendered, it'll probably look pretty good. Uh, so let's see, dead trees, flowering trees, seasonal trees. These are the ones that typically you want, <laughs> at least for, from uh, Luminar T. And you can see there's quite a few of them. Twisted Oak, let's see what that is. It's a massive tree. So, you know, that tree to me is way too big for this drawing. So I would definitely scale this down, something reasonable, and probably put this kind of tree uh, behind the building. It's good in a rendering to, you know, in, in I render you can put a background, but it's also good in a rendering to kind of create foreground, if you will. And I know these look a little funny right now, but they actually look pretty good when they're done. They <clears throat> right now kind of look like a flat version of a tree, uh, but it will come out of 3D. In that's in Luminar T. In I render, it works pretty well, but it's not necessarily exactly what you want because um, it will be. Luminar T takes the proxy and makes it more real. I'm gonna drag this out, make another one. So again, here, use the scale tool and just stretch these things up or down. So again, you get less uh, similarity between these trees. Uh, these are the ones from Luminar T. So these are 3D, essentially. But you can find 3D trees in 3D Warehouse. I don't highly recommend looking at those or using those because they're, they're a high poly count. Well, that's, those are polygons. What that means is that somebody's drawn that tree with pretty much every leaf drawn. What you end up with is a tree that's so intense that the geometry is very, very heavy. And it'll probably kill your drawing in about two seconds. So watch it when you grab those. It does tell you the poly count, poly count in 3D Warehouse. So keep your eye on that. So we'll just add a few more from Luminar T. Uh, that's those trees. Now the, the face me trees come from uh, basically importing these. Get to the file menu, you go file import. These are gonna be components as well, but these are gonna be the flat trees. So I gotta find the right location here on my C drive and components and now I'm going to be looking for landscaping trees notice down here is I get nothing that's because it's looking for AutoCAD files down here at the bottom so make sure you change that to all supported image types because these basically are textures See, it's not finding what I want to find. A 
oh, you know what? I think I'm in, I, I'm in the wrong place. Let me get to the right place here. Um, da, 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 da. I apologize. I'm looking for these. They're not components that I'm looking for. At least I don't think so. They shouldn't be. Uh, here we go. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. These basically are images. So I was looking at components. It's not the right place to look. Landscape. Here we go. So these are basically pictures. I'm sorry, I have this wrong. I'm going to go back to my components a minute. Import the C drive. Components is what I'm looking for. There we go. And trees. You know why I've had, I'm not finding, it should be set to SketchUp files, not import, not image files. Because these are components. So components in SketchUp are um, actually another drawing. So let's grab this Japanese maple and open it. It should show up here someplace. There it is. And set that. So these again are components uh, in SketchUp. So don't do what I just did. I was looking at image files. And that's not going to work. These are three dimensional. Let's do that again. File import. And we'll go to trees here in this case. Uh, you can get these from 3D Warehouse. Uh, you can also find them probably if you search on the web. Uh, but easily found in 3D Warehouse if you put in tree or plant or something of that nature. So these are face me. And the others were actually 3D. So you can see that this tree I just put in is actually dead flat. This is actually a tree from TreeMaker, RP TreeMaker. Uh, what you notice about that, and I think this is important in renderings, is that that has what's called a back, uh, alpha background. And what that means is that there is no solid. These openings are actually openings. In other words, it's translucent. And why do you care about that? Well, when the sun goes through this, it's going to cast a shadow that's soft. So more like a real tree, it's not going to be a solid blob on your drawing. You know, in other words, shadows on their cast. Let's see if I can get it to show. And it doesn't show here that well at this point. But when you render this, this shadow is going to be very light and airy, soft. Because shadows aren't really harsh in the world if you look at them. Okay, so we added some trees, that sort of thing. We can add uh, a car if we want, people. I'll take some people from Lumen RT. These are people that are um, 2D, face me from 3D Warehouse, as I've already said. Uh, add as much planting as you want. We'll take and see if we can add a, a car here. Hopefully it won't. Uh, you know, I'm not going to add it because it's going to slow this whole process down. Cars, things like that, again, are high poly count. But you, you will find some that work fine. Just watch them. Uh, again, like like uh, 3D trees, they can create issues for you. So I'll go back to my working model, the flat view. And I'm looking at this tree and saying, well, it's maybe a little too much in front of something that I want to see here. So maybe I'll move this over. And turn the sunlight off when you're doing this, because otherwise you're going to have a very difficult time. I'll just stick it right there. You'll probably spend a little bit of time 
or organizing this a lot more than I'm doing right here. But once you have it, and you may want to run some test renders, uh, iRender, for example, has what they call a draft mode. So you can render things um, on a very quick basis. Renderings can take a lot of time, but you can do them uh, quickly if you use some of the draft modes. So you only have to, it's not gonna be a perfect, uh, you know, photographic image at that point, but it's gonna show you what, what's gonna happen in terms of arrangement of things. So with iRender, what happens here, this is their toolbar and it's pretty extensive. There's a setup options tab looks looks like a clipboard if you will and you just click on that this is now all completely integrated into sketchup it'll open in a second here i hope apologize for this taking a little bit of time to open is it's not responding, which is not unusual. Uh, I render typically will throw up a not responding notation up there. But typically, there we go, it will open. It makes you, you know, think that's nothing is going to happen, but believe me, it will. Um, this program I like quite a bit because it gives you a lot of control. Uh, again, I think $500, something like that. And for the money, I think you get a lot of program. Uh, across the top are all their different categories for places you can adjust this. And it will take you some time to understand what is what and what does what. But for me, once I got one, you know, kind of where I wanted it to go, uh, it didn't take that much time to, uh, you know, get a handle on it, if you will. This particular one is rendering size. And remember I said kind of a draft mode. If you picked, say, the small version here, that would run pretty quickly. Uh, also remember we talked about clay modeling. So here's clay. Uh, then there's gray with no texture. That would take any textures that you have out of there and color with no texture. What that would do is basically pick up just the base color. Uh, you have to be careful here a little bit. It will pick up section planes. So if there's a section plane active in your drawing anywhere, even though you might not see it in this scene, uh, it's going to find it. And you'll get something where the building's like chopped in half. You're not going to be real happy. So make sure you click none. And I don't know how other, other programs work, but I've, I've found similar situations where uh, there's been an issue with that. Uh, most renderings do essentially passes, kind of like you might think of a uh, 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 jet jink, uh, I'm sorry, inkjet printer, where they go back and forth and just keep passing over. So it's creating uh, swipes of that rendering. Uh, you can set it so it doesn't ever stop. Uh, you could set a rendering, for example, that might run for 20 hours if you want. Uh, that would mean no limit. Uh, typically, you can control the number of passes here, as you can see, and the number of minutes, if you like. There are several different types of rendering images or engines, if you will. Uh, packet mode is the one I was just talking about, where it runs passes. There's a path tracer, which uh, runs much slower. So it's up to you which, which way you want to go. I, the only thing I can tell you is you, you're going to have to try and check it out. This particular program has what's called presets. So across the top, uh, what happens when you click on one of these is it goes through all those categories that we were just looking at and sets everything up for you. So it basically says you want exterior of sun. OK, click on that one. And it will give it to you. Uh, there, you can control ambient light. You can control the balance of light, so sky versus ambient light. And ambient light, is, if you don't know, is just kind of the light that bounces off everything else. And enable artificial lighting. This is important because if you are doing an interior rendering, 
uh, you definitely want that to happen. So those are the lights that you build in SketchUp that will work in layout. All right, let's start, sorry, we're back a day. Uh, will work in iRender. Uh, sometimes these light fixtures show up in other rendering programs, sometimes not. What I find is rendering programs all han handle lighting a little bit differently. So let's say we want to put a background. So we got a background tab. I'll just click on that. And what it does is it gives me essentially uh, the option here to browse. So what I want to do initially is I'm going to just clear that. Okay, I guess didn't find it. There it is. It's gone. That's what I want. I want to do browse. This is where you have a photograph, essentially. Take a second, this runs a little bit slow. And go to where my background images are. So I've saved these up. You can grab them off the internet. You can find uh, sources like even cgtextures.com has them. Um, there's another one called Form Fonts, which doesn't make any sense to me, but it, it does carry a lot of different SketchUp materials, even uh, objects. Uh, we'll go to Backgrounds. And I've subdivided these into several different categories. Uh, there we go. They're starting to fill in. Uh, sky. These, uh, for the most part, are ones that I've found in uh, basically just Googling them. Like I said, you will find websites that actually cater to this. Uh, think about graphic artists use this kind of stuff all the time. So you can uh, add these to your renderings very easily because they're out there in the world just for you to grab. Um, I don't know. I'm going to find one that I like better. Let's go to sky with ground. We'll put this mountain scenery in here and open. And it's going to show up here. There's what's called a layer wizard, which in this particular program allows you to mess around with your backgrounds. So this takes a second to load this. So don't be in a big rush when you're rendering. Obviously, you're going to find that you're going to spend some time on it. What I do like about this particular program is that that background can be moved around. It can be reproportioned. If you grab these little red grips, if you will, you can move them around. You can even change the uh, aspect ratio of that. You can stretch it uh, to distortion they have is off, but you can put it in perspective and grab a corner and it's going to allow you to actually twist that. You can see that a little better that way. Should fill back in in a second. So if you had a background, for example, that was a city street and you wanted to give it some perspective that maybe it doesn't have initially, you can use this particular function and get that to happen. So what it, the key thing here is that I can move that background around and I can see before I ever run the rendering what that's going to look like. Well, let's say that's good. And I'll just close this. So now I've added my background. I can add a foreground as well, uh, which, let me see, I'm going to browse a minute. Now the foreground is more like something you would cast a shadow with. I'll use this one now. And I'm going to layer wizard again. And you can see those trees, move this around too, kind of casting a shadow on the building. You can change the brightness and the contrast of this. I think I'm going to make it a little brighter so it's not so impactful. I'll we'll just call that good for right now. I can, I was looking for a way. Yeah, foreground, background, and then model. You have a way to actually control each one of these in terms of the brightness and the contrast. Uh, a lot of trial and error you're going to find out that you're going to have to do. 
I'll close that. Always in this program, there's a little green circle, a ball, if you will. That means you want to render it. Uh, I'm going to go to large. And I'm going to run this just for a little bit. It might take a couple of minutes. And I'll just knock this down. This is passes. I'm just going to put it at five and kind of limit it. We can always stop it at any time we want. But what happens with passes is that it keeps refining and refining and refining, and mostly the sun. Uh, so bear with me for a minute here. This could take a second, actually more than a second. It's not too bad. What it does is it goes through, finds all the entities, reads the shadows, figures out what's there, and then starts doing its passes. And we're all the way up to 1%. This is a good time to ask questions if you'd like, because uh, we're going to be waiting around just a minute. But what it's doing is going in here and finding all the parts and pieces in the model. Hopefully this won't take forever. If it does, I'll stop it. But conceptually, what will happen is all of the things that you see here will be picked up. The program will understand what they are uh, and will then process them and then run passes. So right now it's uh, basically finding parts and pieces, which this is taking quite a bit of time. So I don't know if we'll run this whole thing. Usually doesn't take quite this much time, but it looks like it's going to. I think we'll make a pass on this. We're only at 11%, so I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to continue this. Maybe for the moment we'll look at another this other rendering program. This is uh, Lumen RT. And hopefully these two aren't going to conflict with each other, but I think they might. Up, yeah, oh, it come. This is Lumen RT. We'll see if that other one will actually render. What you can see here that it's animated. I render. You can see is just a still, but this particular rendering program works just like SketchUp. Uh, what you do is actually export this out, and we'll look at that. But this is the result. Uh, this actually, believe it or not, runs pretty quickly to render. Uh, you can see the animation. If you look closely, you can see these trees moving. You can see, um, I can zoom into this. So much like SketchUp, I just use the scroll wheel. And there's people moving around talking. Now, up close, that's not that great. But from a distance, it actually looks pretty real. Now, if you remember those uh, ladies in the swimming pool uh, at the hotel, those are these people. This one actually looks pretty good. These all come with the program. So all you need to do is just grab them and drop them in. The cars come with the program. Uh, excuse me, I'm in the middle of a tree. You can see the water now actually moves. And that, what you're seeing, that kind of green color is a reflection of the trees. So there is reflection. Uh, I went a little over the top with this one and actually made ripples in the water, if you can see that. That's, that was done in SketchUp, just put a uh, kind of a follow me bump all the way around three times. So, you know, maybe got a little over the top, but anything you can do to add realism to your rendering is certainly a good idea. Now, I can do a lot more than what I'm doing here right now. Let's look at adding some trees. These are all the uh, Lumen, RT three, uh, Lumen RT architect trees. So they have, remember the list we looked at in SketchUp? They have the same list here, hopefully. There we go. This is the same thing that we were looking at in SketchUp in the component library. Uh, here we have categories across the top. Maybe this other one's starting to render. 
Let's look at that a second. Hopefully I don't trash this because I got too many things running. Turn off as much as I can. No, it's still working on it. Oh, it's starting to happen here. Good. This is what's called passes, so you can see this now. Uh, this is just the large size. If you picked, for example, SketchUp size, uh, it's going to fill the whole screen. I'm just doing this in a small version so you can see it. Uh, not crazy about these vines down here, and maybe this foreground's a little too strong, but that's the whole point of uh, running these draft renderings, if you will. You can look and see exactly what it is you do have happening. That's pass number two, but it will keep refining uh, the amount of shadow and things that you have in here. Unfortunately, in an hour and a half, we probably don't have enough time to actually run these renderings 100%, but in the foreground photograph here as well, uh, it has to be selected kind of carefully. I could have done this a little better, but what I do like about using foreground on the right side of the building here, you can see shadows actually cast what looks like shadows, but in reality, they're not shadows. It's just this foreground. And I could have probably lightened up that foreground even more. But you can see how easy it is to add a background. Uh, the trees and things in here, uh, I would suggest if in RP, uh, Lumen RT, uh, those trees from there probably work best in their program. Uh, the 2D face me trees, things from 3D Warehouse, will probably work better in a still rendering. Some of these are okay. Back here, that one's okay. You kind of have to, again, do a little trial and error. Uh, this is making passes. And because it's kind of small, it may be a little difficult to appreciate. However, let's see what we got here. You saw the renderings initially, so that's the final result was those. Okay, so I'm not going to let that run forever, but this, if you want to do a final rendering, I'll be honest with you, you're probably going to do something that you get it all set up, you run the rendering, and then... Uh, Go to bed, get up in the morning and see what you've got. Uh, number of passes probably minimum for a rendering of this sort would be 40. Uh, this program defaults to 20, but I found that 20 is probably not enough. Uh, if you're doing just quick studies, don't run them anymore and say 10. I think this was at five and it's almost done. So it doesn't take too long. You can see your setup. Uh, kind of like you might have done in the old time where you had several different views, you can do that here as well. Okay, so it's done. Now that obviously is not great. <laughs> I would spend a great deal more time. I'd get rid of these vines for sure because I don't like that at all. I'll just close this and say, yes, yeah, stop rendering. So here I've already noticed that vine is terrible so I get rid of that uh, let's go on the inside here I'll turn off the Sun so I can move around a little bit more easily I'm trying to get in there scroll 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 there we go these lights are what you saw in the renderings uh, they're nothing more than a circle so I can get down in there deep enough. Basically a circle drawn on the ceiling, pushed up maybe an inch. And within I render, if I click on that surface and right click on it, I get I render NXT uh, context menu. And create material is fine, but set object properties is what we're looking for. And what that does is it gives me the opportunity 
open this up a little more. Right now you see it says light type, none. Light is off, diffuse directional. Omnidirectional is typically the one that works the best. Uh, click on that. What that means is it shoots that light everywhere. Uh, and then it gives you the direction that you want the light to shine. Uh, minus blue is obvious for ceiling light, so you want it to shine down. Plus, is it, maybe it was in the floor, you want it to shine up. And the same for the other. So you can shine light left, right, up, down, whatever you'd like. Uh, you can change the intensity here uh, by wattage of the bulb. What I have found, even though you would think this would be more correct, uh, I usually don't want to set that much more than 20, maybe 25. And channels, these are the lighting channels that I was talking about before. There's actually eight. Let's see, where's the part where I want to put it in, how many I want. Intensity channel zero. So there's seven. And basically, once you set it here, that puts that light fixture on channel 7. And you can have numerous fixtures on, say, channel 7 or 6 or 5. And this program allows you to control them as a group. Uh, you can change the angle of the beam coming out of there. Uh, usually somewhere around 100 is better. Field angle. Uh, light has kind of two angles that happen. Uh, I can't explain that in this time period without a diagram, but you can look that up. I actually asked these guys about it. The field angle doesn't make a huge amount of difference. So what I've done actually at this point is I've made that a light. That's all it took. And I just say, okay. If I were to render this now, that would act as a light. And it would be on channel 7. So if I go to here... No, I want to set this up. I'm going to go to my settings and look for lights. And down here you can see the channels. Right now there's from 0 to 7. It says default to 8. And that's because 0 is one of the 8. And here I can now control the lighting here. So what's happening? Uh, all the channels that I've preset the light fixtures on, the light, the brightness of these lights can be controlled here. So um, you can turn them off or on with these check boxes, or you can uh, control the brightness of each of those channels separately, which is pretty nice. You really want to be able to get in there and balance lighting, work that out so that you know your rendering looks the best that it can. I won't get into actually doing that because I'm not going to run a whole nother render here. But uh, this program, I think, is pretty flexible. You can add fog if you want, uh, which is pretty slick. Uh, so you can actually create a fog-like image. So if you want to diffuse your image a bit, you can do it with that. Uh, this has an interesting thing in this program uh, where it, the lines that you've drawn in SketchUp can actually be displayed. So you can display edges. I've never used that because it's always seemed kind of backward. This is the output. Uh, this will output to JPEG or Ping or, or an NXT image, which I don't use because they actually have their own editor. If I'm going to edit stuff, I'm probably going to do it in Photoshop rather than uh, in this program. Mr. Krupp, we do have two questions. Perfect timing. All right. The first question is, uh, the green 2D tree uh, to the left, this question was asked a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. the green 2D tree to the left that casts light shadows, what program? That's RP Tree Maker, and that's actually part of uh, iRender NXT as well as a free program out there. So this one I'm assuming he's talking about. That's one that you build. That's RP Tree Maker. Maybe we can take a look at that real quick. Uh, create RP Tree Maker Plant. That's what comes up in here. If I click on that, hopefully this doesn't take too long. It's kind of slick because you can actually make your own tree. 
this is it. Uh, what's happening here is that's your beginning point. If I go to trunk, I can actually say I want three trunks, four. Okay, I can change the angle of those trunks. This is all obviously uh, interactive immediately. Uh, standard, I can change the length of the branches. Uh, the bending, so you can see you can get a little crazy. I think the one that works the best, that actually makes them look more real than any, is crookedness. Because it will kind of take the tree and give it a little twist, which is probably more realistic uh, than any you know, of these were real straight branches. Uh, you can add different kinds of leaves. I think here it will take me if I click on it. There should be several different kinds of leaves here. Well, that's not where I want to go. I'll get around that. There is a place where it holds these leaves, and you can actually even make your own if you want to. Uh, there are the number of buds. Let's see, you can put fruit, flowers. So you saw the flowers show up on here. I can say that there's uh, less flowers, more flowers. So it's, you know, whatever you want, you can build. You can even pick the different trunk uh, images, if you will. Uh, what happens when you render these is that that trunk image actually, it's a photograph that gets applied to that. So anyway, that's the answer to your question, I hope. That's without leaves with leaves. So you can make dead trees, I guess, as well. Uh, you can change the number of roots. If you look on the bottom, it kind of keeps adding chicken feet to it. Uh, you can change the height. What happens when you do this? You just say OK. And what ends up happening is that doesn't look like much, but basically what happens here, I won't do this well, maybe I will. I've got enough time. No, I'll, I'll hold off on this. But basically, you hit start, and it renders that tree that you just had and sticks it on the end of your cursor, and then you just drop it into, uh, into your rendering. Uh, it is a component at that point, so you can save it outside of your drawing if you like, which is what you saw here. Hopefully, this thing won't grind on me too much. What's the other question? The other question is, in the grand scheme, how does Photoshop fit in? Uh, Photoshop, you can come in and basically, you, I, I'm not going to get into that too much, but you can re-render pretty much anything. You go in and uh, repaint walls. Uh, once you have the rendering, basically it's a JPEG. That's the output. So whatever you can do with a photograph, typically in, in uh, Photoshop, you can do here. Uh, you could add backgrounds in Photoshop if you like. Uh, there are several videos, I think, on YouTube that get into this pretty heavily. Uh, they're pretty lengthy because of the amount of effort that you have to put into it. I honestly go in mostly and control contrast and brightness, uh, maybe do a little um, or cloning, that sort of thing, kind of blend some stuff together. Um, normally, I will do that, say I've got a background and I've got the ground in SketchUp and the two come together someplace. Uh, there I'll do some cloning, so I might add some bushes and trees and things of that nature along that juncture. Uh, you can blend the two together, if you will. So that can help quite a bit. I am not going to profess to be a Photoshop expert, but if you do uh, no Photoshop better than I. Uh, the answer to your question is anything you can do in, in Photoshop with any other photograph you can do uh, with these with the output from these because they are JPEGs and they are pings. So I think a ping in Photoshop is even happier with that. Hopefully that helps. It's kind of a political answer I'm afraid but uh, I think the best answer is whatever you can do with Photoshop with other photographs you can do with this output. Now, 
let's see, I want to go back to this. Okay, so this is Lumen RT. And what I do like about this is that it operates. There's my tree that I grabbed before. I don't know if you can see it. It's just kind of hanging out on the end of the cursor. And it'll drop it in there. Once it's in, I can rotate that tree. It's not going to be very clear as to what's going on there. And I can move it. So these trees can be installed, as you already saw. They can be put in directly in SketchUp. Or they can be put in within the rendering program itself. I can scale it here. Actually, that's just moving it up. This, unfortunately, is a European program. So if you notice here, everything's going to be metric. So if you understand metric, that will help. You can scale these in SketchUp more so than in, uh, in this program. So I tend to put these trees actually in the drawing in SketchUp. This does have a rather interesting, let's see if I can find it here, a way to kind of build a forest real quick. So what I'm doing is just scrolling, orbiting, just like you would do in SketchUp. You can create a movie with this. And I'm going to show you a real quick version of that. It's on the internet on in YouTube. Uh, let's see if I can get to it. Unfortunately, I get all this stuff in my way. Okay, here it is. This is that same model that we were just looking at. You can actually create uh, a movie from this program. Uh, there is one caveat there, however. Uh, you need a heck of a graphic, graphics card for your uh, computer. I ran into that with this and... Um, I think I've spent more on the graphics card than I spent on the program, but uh, you need at least two gigabytes of onboard RAM on your graphics card to export the movie. You don't need it to do everything else I'm doing here, but you do need it uh, to export that movie. Uh, we'll just play this for a second. So enough said. You still hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Just kind of went blank on my end. I wanted to make sure. Uh, so basically, you can make that movie. Uh, it's like making scenes in SketchUp. Uh, the difference here is you're going to set uh, keyframes. So it will, this program will actually, much like SketchUp will do with scenes, it will transition from one keyframe to another. And essentially, there's a little movie maker. So I can make it work here for a second. These are your keyframes. And you can see this was already done. This is where we made that movie you were just looking at. Uh, you set your model at the place where you want it to be, and you basically say add a keyframe, and it does. Uh, the little spaces in between are the transitions, and you can control how much time it takes to get from one to the other. 
the program actually automates that so you don't have to think about it too much but uh, I think of anything in this program making that animation is the key thing for me uh, very effective for clients and uh, makes you look like a you know 22nd century wizard this will also allow you to set certain as at atmospheric conditions so all of these things along the side are basically the only controls that you have which are plenty believe me uh, I can set which ways north just by moving this slider and it will change the way the sunlight hits this it might be a little better to get it up in a different view okay this might make it a little more effective so if I move north I can change the Sun so this unlike uh, I render uh, I can't do this over there but I can do it here I can change the date so you can be very effective you can fine-tune your rendering pretty quickly with this program uh, you can change the brightness of the Sun in this thing you can uh, change the time of day in a different way uh, whether we have blue sky or overcast and I don't know if you can see it let's go a little more overcast here and what that does is add more clouds in the sky uh, you can control that however you like you can see it starts thinning out and if you look at it the clouds are actually moving uh, the trees are moving you can control the wind and the plants which is what you're seeing here if I want to make hurricane weather I can so I can make these things blow like crazy uh, or still I think in terms of a general purpose render that will do animations uh, this thing works wonders uh, again what I like about it is I can set it on the fly once I have what I want it's kind of running past that on me you cannot buy it. by the way you can go into these little boxes and uh, type in what you like let's leave that for what it is uh, this has actually layers in it as well so all your layers in SketchUp are going to show up here I think this canopy for example is on a layer I uncheck it here the canopy goes away so <laughs> there's so much connectivity between this program and SketchUp it's unbelievable uh, so if you're going to buy one out of these two I would say this would be the one I'd buy however I think this one works not as well on interiors where uh, I render NXT works really well on interiors this uh, for exteriors mostly uh, you can add cars here uh, you have a huge selection of cars uh, these are just the several versions you can get some pretty they're not all going to be yellow you drop one of these cars in here every time you drop a car in here it's going to be uh, a different color there it is so you saw the one that I grabbed was yellow this one I can actually change the color of the car too so I'm making it maybe more green something of that nature so you uh, and you can do this at any point you don't have to do it right after you drop it in you can make the car rotated I think if I can find that it's not wanting to be too happy with me right at the moment okay so that car can be moved however I'd like to move it around make it go down the driveway there's the rotate so if I want to rotate it I can I think this is just so slick especially for 495 it's unbelievable what you get here uh, trees we looked at that background can be changed uh, let's see if I can find it here 
And sometimes I get into this, I don't really want to get into it because it can grind a little bit. So color, you can change the color of everything in this model uh, if you like. You can see up here you can have the lights of the car off or on. You can make the car more metallic so it can be a little shinier. Uh, you can do that with pretty much any material in here. And that's for the animation. Just trying to get that to close. There we go. Uh, like I said, there's people. Endless numbers of people, animals. Um, this cat actually walks around. Uh, the, I think the dog, um, the tail wags, things like that. You have people sitting, people walking. And these people, when they're walking, they are actually going to walk. I have groups of people. There's only a couple of those. Uh, you have relaxing. Here's our, uh, I don't know why there's only one guy, but there's a bunch of girls here that can uh, be put in, all in nice little bikinis. If you grab a person, I guess we need a, a guard here. Come on, Gerard, come on over. They name all these guys. Here it is. It's coming. Where he went. Regardless, I think this model's got a little too much going on in it, right? There he is. There he is. So they come in kind of as a ghost. I'll just put them out in the middle of the driveway. I guess it's her now. I guess he's there too. Let's get out of this mess. All right, just like in SketchUp, there's a nice little zoom extents. You hit the home key and you'll get out of that mess. So just like SketchUp, you can get lost in it too. I wanna get rid of the people. Let's get rid of that. There's a guy in the tree. Uh, you can use the arrow keys to move left and right. You can use page up, page down to move up and down. So right now we got that lady in there twice, which probably doesn't make a lot of sense. Unfortunately, they don't come in in different color clothes. Just going to delete one of them. Okay. So it, uh, obviously in the amount of time I have, I can't possibly do a whole rendering, but this actually renders really quickly. Uh, within SketchUp, there are only three little, uh, well, maybe five little icons here. That's the entire toolbar for Lumen RT. The first one is export to Lumen RT. So what it would do is just take this model, export it out and uh, give you what you were just seeing. You can add lights in this program. Uh, I don't particularly care for them very much because they do show up in your SketchUp model as this kind of goofy object that I'm not crazy about. Uh, iRender has kind of the same stuff going on. Unfortunately, in a lot of rendering programs, uh, the light fixtures they give you show up in your SketchUp model as kind of weird looking things. Uh, that's why I build all my own. I'd rather do that. And, uh, I render NXT gives you the ability to change anything to a light fixture. So we'll end it with this. If we have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them now.